I'm Judith Roberts from the Literacy Project, and of course, Rosemary I'm Rosemary Kane. In unison. <laughs> <laughs> in unison. Tonight's Bloomsday is a benefit for the Literacy Project. And I was thinking how we're here because of a love of literature, particularly the great hero of Ireland, James Joyce. But it's an embracing of literature. And our students at the Literacy Project, we have 300 adult students every year, they're on a journey from literacy to literature. So hope that you will help us tonight by going to www.literacyproject.org and give a donation to help our students on their journey to loving learning and loving literature. Rosemary is going to tell well, you. Here we are on the 16th of June and it's Bloom's Day and it's, we've collaborated many a time and we're, we're usually in the kind of the natural habitat of James Joyce, a pub. But of course we're not in a pub, we're out in the garden and uh, we are thinking about next year's Bloom's Day that'll be in a pub, but so far so good. Um, James Joyce, you know, he left Ireland at age 22. He never really looked back much geographically, but of course Ireland was every day with him in his writings. Um, Ulysses, the greatest aspirational read, I think, of all time. Um, if you can chew off even a few pages of that, I would recommend you actually listen to it. It's the vernacular language of the Dublin of the Times. Or you start with Dubliners, the greatest collection of short stories, and the last short story, The Dead, from which there will be a reading is probably one of the best in the English language. It was thought that Ulysses was banned in Ireland. It was banned in many countries. It was considered pornographic. And indeed, the Molly Bloom soliloquy does maybe produce a slight blush periodically. Um, the Irish decided not to uh, ban it because it would have cost too much to produce it and uh, too much money to fight the legalities. And, and so it actually was not banned, and neither did James Joyce win the Nobel Prize. He should have, but anyway, he did not. But he has gone on to fame and fortune you know, as the greatest writer to ever come out of Ireland, and certainly the father of the modern novel. A drink to James. To James <laughs> and to you, Rosemary. When I dropped out of school, I didn't think that I could pass my GED right away and luckily I had heard about the Literacy Project through some friends of mine. Um, so I went to them and I asked for help, and they gave me totally free support. They gave me a place to go to study, they set me up with a practice test, and when I got good scores on my practice test, they gave me the reassurance that I needed that I could then go and take the real test and get my GED. Um, I needed that a lot, that confidence building, a supportive adult to tell me this is what you do to get your GED, this is how you do it, and you're capable. That mattered a lot to me.
James Joyce had great respect for the poet William Butler Yeats. Not alone did he love his poetry, but he also loved singing William Butler Yeats poems that were set to music. So we have Down by the Sally Gardens, sung by Brooke Steinhauser. escaping and run into yourself? The shortest way round is the longest way home. Hi everyone. My name is Chris France and I'm proud to represent the Literacy Project's Board of Directors. Thank you very much for participating in this Zooms Day Blooms Day. Your generosity is more important now than ever. So many of our adult students have lost their jobs and many of those jobs aren't coming back. Over the last couple of months, the Literacy Project team has worked hard to put all classes online uh, and has raised enough money to provide 35 laptops to students in need. As we look ahead to the fall and next winter, 35 to 40 more laptops are needed. Um, please donate. Any amount will help. Uh, go to literacyproject.org um, and do what you can. Thanks so much.
want to give a picture of Dublin so complete that if the city suddenly disappeared from Earth, I could reconstruct it out of my book. So we fall in love with learning, learning to love, and loving to learn at the Literacy Project. So please help us out tonight. Go to www.literacyproject.org to make a donation so that we can provide laptops for our students. All of our classes now are online and we can provide those laptops so our students can work from home and continue with their education to make a better tomorrow, to love learning and learn to love. Thank you so much.
stood, holding her head between his hands, then slipping one arm swiftly about her body and drawing him towards her. He said softly, Greta, dear, what are you thinking about? She did not answer, nor yield wholly to his arm. He said again, softly, Tell me what it is, Greta. I think I know what is the matter. Do I know? She did not answer at once. Then she said in an outburst of tears, Oh, I am thinking about that song, The Lass of Ockram. She broke loose from him and ran to the bed, and throwing her arms around the bed well, hid her face. Gabriel stood stock still for a moment in astonishment and then followed her. As he passed in the way of the cheval mirror, he caught sight of himself in full length, his broad, well-filled shirt front, the face whose expression always puzzled him when he saw it in the mirror, and his glimmering gold-rimmed eyeglasses. He halted a few paces from her and said, what about the song? Why does it make you cry? She raised her head from her arms and dried her eyes with the back of her hand like a child. A kinder note than he had intended went into his voice. Why, Greta? he asked. I am thinking about that person long ago who used to sing that song. And who was that person long ago? asked Gabriel, smiling. It was a person I used to know in Galway when I was living with my grandmother, she said. The smile passed away from Gabriel's face. A dull anger began to gather again in the back of his mind, and the dull fires of his lust began to glow angrily in his veins. Someone you were in love with, he asked ironically. It was a young boy I used to know, she answered, named Michael Fury. He used to sing that song, The Lass of Ockram. He was very delicate. Gabriel was silent. He did not wish to think that he was interested in this delicate boy. I can see him so plainly, she said. After a moment, such eyes as he had, big, dark eyes, and such an expression in them, an expression. Oh, then you were in love with him, said Gabriel. I used to go walking with him, she said, when I was in Galway. A thought flew across Gabriel's mind. Perhaps that was why you wanted to go to Galway with that Ivers girl, he said coldly. She looked at him and again in surprise. What for? Her eyes made Gabriel feel awkward. He shrugged his shoulders and said, how do I know? To see him, perhaps. She looked away from him along the shaft of light towards the window in silence. He is dead, she said at length. He died when he was only 17. Isn't that a terrible thing to die as young as that? What was he? Asked Gabriel, still ironically. He was in the gasworks, she said. Gabriel felt humiliated by the failure of his irony and by the evocation of this figure from the dead, a boy in the gasworks. While he had been full of memories of their secret life together, full of tenderness and joy and desire, she had been comparing him in her mind with another. A shameful consciousness of his own person assailed him. He saw himself as a ludicrous figure, acting as a penny boy for his aunts, a nervous, well-meaning sentimentalist, orating to vulgarians and idealizing his own clownish lusts, the pitiable, fatuous fellow he had caught a glimpse of in the mirror. Instinctively, he turned his back more to the light, lest she might see the shame that burned upon his forehead. He tried to keep up his tone of cold interrogation, but his voice, when he spoke, was humble and indifferent. I suppose you were in love with this Michael Fury, Greta, he said. I was great with him at that time, she said. Her voice was veiled and sad, Gabriel, feeling now in vain it would be to try to lead her whither he had purposed, caressed one of her hands and said, almost sadly, and what did he die of so young, Greta? Consumption, was it? I think he died for me, she answered.
understood as the desire of good for another, is in fact so unnatural a phenomena that it can scarcely repeat itself. The soul being unable to become virgin again and not having energy enough to cast itself out again into the ocean of another soul. And Gibraltar, as a girl where I was a flower of the mountain, yes. When I put the rose in my hair like the Andalusian girls used. Or shall I wear red? Yes. And how he kissed me under the Moorish wall and I thought, well, as well him as another. And then I asked him with my eyes to ask again, yes. And then he asked me, would I? Yes. And to say yes, my mountain flower. And first I put my arms around him, yes. And drew him down to me so he could feel my breasts, all perfume, yes. And his heart was going like mad. And yes, I said, yes, I will, yes. At the Literacy Project, we're all about hope. Hope for a better future for our students, for a better tomorrow. And James Joyce said, I am tomorrow or some future day, what I establish today. So one of our students at the Literacy Project said, the Literacy Project has given me back my tomorrows. We've given her a second chance at having a better future, a better tomorrow. And our students go on, once they have the high school diploma, they go on to community college, to job training programs, and to better jobs to support themselves and their families. One of our students from Northampton, Joe, said, all of my problems in life come from being undereducated. He said, I never knew that education also included art and poetry and literature. I never thought I'd be the person to look forward to Monday morning to coming to school at the Literacy Project. Not only have I learned, but I've learned to love myself more. So we fall in love with learning learning to love and loving to learn at the Literacy Project. So please help us out tonight. Go to www.literacyproject.org to make a donation so that we can provide laptops for our students. All of our classes now are online and we can provide those laptops so our students can work from home and continue with their education to make a better tomorrow, to love learning and learn to love. Thank you so much. Hey, this is Joseph Lubo for the Literacy Project. You know, just a couple personal thoughts. Most of my struggles in life were directly related to education. At 58, education is scary. The Literacy Project was very warm and welcoming. I never realized education would make me a better steward in the community. And I never realized the arts was part of education. And I can't ever remember on Sunday saying, I can't wait till school. But for all I've learned here, the Literacy Project has taught me to love myself. Sincerely, Joseph Rubel. Thank you. A girl from the countryside, very smart, pretty I guess, uh, leaves home and her name is Nora Barnacle. Well, looking for love because if you have a last name like Barnacle, you can <laughs> scrape off being single. <laughs> she did very well actually. I mean, Nora met a young man named James Joyce. She was 20, he was 22. They fell in love, of course, ran away from uh, Ireland, left Ireland, and lived a life on the road. And of course, you know, 
James uh, wrote the uh, book Ulysses, of which Nora had only read 17 pages of all the That's 17 more pages than I could ever read. <laughs> but, you know, they had a, a very embittered relationship with Ireland. It's very hard. So they lived abroad, Paris, Trieste, moved around. And when they were flush with money, of course, then they, uh, they, they lived well. They weren't flush, they lived like anybody else, going between Paris, Trias, ups and downs, just like any couple in the world. I'll, I'll let them tell you the story of this, all right? Let's hear about it all, Nora. James did not marry for 31 years after leaving Ireland. A living in sin was frowned upon in Europe, not just in Ireland. Because of their unstable financial situation, they lived in over 20 different locations in Europe, moving from apartment to apartment and country to country. The children, Lucia and Giorgio, were born in Trieste and Paris. <laughs> In Dublin, slum conditions. 
nations Makes me think of Galway and the open sea Why is it that words like this seem dull and cold? Because they are not tender enough to be your name. Every life is many days, day after day after day. <laughs> we walk through our cells meeting robbers, ghosts, giants, old men, young men, <laughs> wives, widows, brothers in love but always meeting ourselves. <laughs> Writing in English is the most ingenious torture ever devised for sins committed in previous lives. The English reading public explains the reason why. James Joyce said, I am tomorrow or some future date, what I establish today. He was a hopeful man looking to a better tomorrow. Please help us at the Literacy Project to give our students a better tomorrow. Go to www.literacyproject.org and make a donation. Thank you. Happy Bloom's Day. Hope you're enjoying some Guinness for Bloom's Day. The song I'm going to do has a rousing chorus to it, so we need a lot of people singing along, but I don't see any around here. So while you're watching this video, you can sing the chorus at home or wherever you're watching it. Here are the words. Whack fall the da. That's kind of Irish for la 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 or dooby dooby doo or something like that. Whack fall the da. 
Now dance to your partner. Whack for the da, now dance to your partner. Then we have round the floor, your trotters shake. Your trotters are your legs, so it means you're dancing. Whack for the da, now dance to your partner. Round the floor, your trotters shake. Not much more. Wasn't it the truth I told ya? Sticky papers. Lots of fun at Finnegan's Wake. So, here's how it goes. Whack for the da, now dance to your partner. Round the floor, your trotters shake. Wasn't it the truth I told ya? Lots of fun at Finnegan's Wake. So sing it real loud every time we get to the chorus, okay? Okay. Tim Finnegan lived on Walken Street. A gentle Irishman, mighty odd. He had a brogue, both rich and sweet, and to rise in the world he carried a hod. Now Tim had a sort of a tippler's way, with the love for the liquor poor Tim was born. And to help him on his work each day, he'd a drop of the crather every morn. Whack for the dog, now dance to your partner around the floor, your trotter shake. Wasn't it the truth I told you? I'm so fun at Finnegan's Wake. Well, one morning, Tim got rather full, his head felt heavy, which made him shake. He fell from his ladder, he broke his skull, dead. They carried him home, his corpse to wake. They rolled him out in a nice clean sheet, and they laid him out across the bed. A bucket of whiskey at his feet, and a barrel of porter at his head. Whack for the dog, the best of your partner, on the floor, your tongue or shake. I told you lots of fun at Finnegan's Wake. His friends assembled at the wake, and Mrs. Finnegan called for lunch. Lunch! First she brought out tea and cake, then pipe tobacco and whiskey punch. And Biddy O'Brien began to cry. <laughs> Such a nice clean corpse did you ever see? Tim of Honor, why did you die? <laughs> Will you shut your gob, said Patty McGee. Whack for the dog, now dance to your partner round the floor. Your trotter shake, wasn't it the truth? I told you lots of fun at Finnegan's Wake. And Maggie O'Connor took up the job. Biddy, says she, you're wrong, I'm sure. Biddy gave her a belt in the gob and left her sprawling on the floor. Then civil war did soon engage. Twas woman to woman and man to man. Shillelagh law was all the rage, and a row and eruption soon began. Whack for the dog, now dance to your partner around the floor. You try to shake, once it did. The truth I told you, lots of fun at Finnegan's Wake. Mickey Maloney, he ducked his head when a bucket of whiskey flew at him. It missed, and landing on the bed, the whiskey splattered over Tim. He's the dead guy. Be dad, he revives, see how he rises. Timothy rising from the dead, saying, Will your whiskey run like blazes? Tucker and Jesus, do you think I'm dead? Whack for the dog, down next to your partner, around the floor, your trotter shake. Now, the song Finnegan's Wake was very popular in music halls in the 1860s. And James Joyce did something very, very clever with that title of Finnegan's Wake. He took out the apostrophe. So it's no longer Finnegan apostrophe S. Wake. It's Finnegan's, a word, wake. Instead of being about the wake of someone named Finnegan, Finnegan's becomes a noun and wake becomes a verb. So he's not saying something about the wake of Finnegan. He's saying a statement, Finnegan's wake. Finnegan's are humans and they wake. We all wake in an endless cycle, in a circle of birth and death and rebirth, and that's what the whole book is about, that endless cycle of birth and death and rebirth. And the whole book is a circle. It has no beginning, 
It has no middle, it has no end, it just goes around and around and around. Now the very last word on the very last page of the book is the word the. Just hanging there in midair, no comma, no dot, 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 no anything else, just the. And the first word of the book is a lowercase word, the word is river run. So what happens is you reach the very last word in the book and you go back to the beginning and it goes around and around and around. So it comes down to fin again, begin again. And I'm going to read the very last few words of the book and go right back into where it starts again, the beginning, the end, the beginning and the end. So, Ave Laval, my leaves have drifted from me, all, but one clings. I'll bear it on me to remind me of Lif. Oh, soft this morning, ours. Yes, carry me along, Teddy, like you've done through the toy fair. If I had seen him bearing down on me now under white spread wings, like he'd come from archangels, I'd sink down, I'd die over his feet, humbly dumbly, only to wash up. Yes, Tid. There's where, first, we pass through grass, be hush the bush to wish. Gull. Gulls, far calls. Coming far. End here. Us, then. Finn, again. Take, bus awful thee, memor me, till thousands and thee, oops, the keys too, given, away, alone, a last, a loved, along the river run, past even atoms, from swerve of shore to bend of bay, brings us, by a commodious vicus of recirculation, back to Howth Castle, and environments. The beginning and the end and the beginning.
you a beautiful, beautiful music. And a big thank you to Rosemary Kane and the Wild Irish Women and the great men that have the good sense to follow them. Robin Fouts, Brooke Steinhauser, Michael Morgan, Chris Devine, Michael Haley, Mo McGilligot, Jenny and Giannis Chibani. And thank you to our musicians, our readers, our singers. So beautiful and uplifting. And I also want to thank Drew Hutchison for donating his time to put this Zoom video together. Thank you, Drew. Very generous of you. And our wonderful sponsors who have made this program free and open to the public, Jones Witsit Architects of Greenfield, the Greenfield Cooperative Bank, Hit Point of Greenfield, Media Games, and also Snow and Sons Landscaping. So they've co contributed to the Literacy Project and we hope that you will too. We hope you'll dig deep into your hearts and pocketbooks and give at www.literacyproject.org. We're raising money to buy laptops for our students so they can continue their studies during this time from home. Thank you.